Play the right role in every situation. I always am in a role, lovely, for you, for them, even for myself. Yeah. Even when I'm alone, I am still in a role, and I myself am the most exacting audience I have ever had. Simona Panova, author of Nightmarish Sacrifice, many of the world's greatest leaders, along with effective people from all walks of life, know how to play different yet still authentic roles that help them fit in with many diverse groups of people. In scenarios of all kinds. Whether you're preparing for a presentation, being promoted, being reassigned to a new position, or finding that you have grown stagnant in your current life or business circumstances, discovering how to play different roles and to adopt new styles of behavior powers up your creativity and confidence. Playing the right role is about identifying how you fit into a given scenario and stealing the show when you do. This chapter will help you develop new skills to present, pitch, and perform based on your strengths and interests. It's about building on who you are, what you stand for, and what you already do, and doing it for a purpose. When you're playing the right roles, you are persuasive in those roles because they are authentic to you, and amplifying the most positive, powerful, and compelling parts of your personality really is quite fun. However, and this may seem contradictory, if you stay rigidly fixed on what you see as your true self, you might not realize that you can adopt different styles of behavior and still be authentic. I've spoken for many years on this concept of adapting your style of behavior in all aspects of life to meet the needs of different situations. It's what an actor does, and it's been a key to my success. I found the January 2015 Harvard Business Review article by Herminia Ibarra about how this concept applies to leadership to be important as we strive to improve our game. A clear and firm sense of self is a compass that helps us navigate choices and progress toward our goals. But when we're looking to change our game, a too rigid self-concept becomes an anchor that keeps us from sailing forth. People who are able to adopt different styles of behavior to suit the dynamics of a given situation are comfortable adjusting their style to different situations without feeling fake or pretending to be something they're not. It's like being a chameleon, which is different than playing roles where you pretend to be something you're not or know something you don't. Take that too far and you might start spinning the truth or even misleading people. With that said, when attempting to wow an audience, close a deal, or pitch an idea, we win when we present the best parts of ourselves, but not every part of ourselves. We succeed when we amplify the parts of our personalities that match the needs of the moment and we set aside, but don't hide, the parts of ourselves that don't. By contrast, people who are fixated on one value system, one way of being, tend to express what they think and feel, even when it runs counter to situational demands. Doing so is not always necessary. It can be a demonstration of rigidity, the need to be right, the inability to improvise as needed, or even an intolerance of other perspectives or styles of behavior. As a result, the folks who feel compelled to express what they think and feel even when it's not appropriate for the given circumstance often have trouble performing the role required in new situations, such as moving from middle management into a leadership position, from employee to entrepreneur, from associate to partner, or even from single to married, or vice versa. Yes, I know this concept can be confounding, but if you're willing to entertain the idea that you can authentically play different roles and adopt different styles of behavior to easily glide from one scenario to another and one group of people to another, you may have access to opportunities that previously weren't available to you. Successful and effective people will often play different roles to suit the situation. They're willing to experiment with playing different roles until they become comfortable with the new behaviors or attitudes required to play their new parts. Eventually, each role fits them authentically and brings out their strengths. Understanding how roles work. The first principle for learning how you play the right role is to emphasize some parts of your personality and de-emphasize other parts, depending on what the professional or personal circumstance calls for. However, if you play the same role in every situation, you may cause conflict, alienate people, and limit your ability to excel. Take the Marine Corps Battalion Leader. He may feel that he has to stay in character even when he's playing the role of father to his young girls. 
Staying in the role of soldier, he creates a home atmosphere of intensity and rigidity that creates anxiety in his daughters. Imagine if a stand-up comedian wanted to produce and direct a big-budget film but couldn't turn off his class clown style of behavior in meetings with Hollywood executives. Do you think they'd take him seriously enough to let him manage all that money? On the other hand, a college professor who understands this concept may play the role of entertaining and kindly grandfather in the classroom while taking on a much tougher role with his most talented graduate students because he wants to push them to higher levels of excellence. In my case, the role I play as a mentor to my clients is far different than the role I play as a student at my jiu-jitsu school. But they are equally authentic. You will recognize me in both roles. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, had already mastered a number of different roles as Steve Jobs' chief operating officer. Cook coached divisions and led division heads worldwide. He cultivated and educated major retail customers, and he interacted and communicated with jobs. When Cook became CEO of Apple, he had to learn new roles, particularly that of being the company's public spokesperson and leader of its brand. Cook now introduces Apple products in closely scrutinized presentations and meets with the most influential business and financial media. These are roles Steve Jobs once played. On October 30th, 2014, Cook did a brilliant take on a new role, a gesture that resonated worldwide. In an article published in Bloomberg Business Week, Tim Cook speaks up. He did something quite rare for a CEO. He auditioned for a new role and performed it brilliantly. Cook announced that he was gay and said it was one of the greatest gifts God gave me. Cook wrote that he did not hide his orientation. Most people at Apple knew and treated it as a mundane matter. He acknowledged that because so much of his life at Apple kept him in the spotlight, it was important to him to preserve a private sphere of his life. However, Cook found a role that was calling to him, that of socially responsible citizen. He saw that the prominence of his position, particularly as a white male CEO in a global technology brand, offered him the opportunity to provide an example that could inspire, comfort, and perhaps even protect others. He didn't do this for the stock price or to get an edge on Apple's competitors. He used the article to articulate and assume a role others hadn't expected he'd play. And the response from the LGBT community, investors, the business community, customers, vendors, fans, press, and even many political and religious leaders was overwhelmingly positive. Cook wrote the lines for his, true, character to play in this new role. I don't consider myself an activist, but I realize how much I've benefited from the sacrifice of others. So if hearing that the CEO of Apple is gay can help someone struggling to come to terms with who he or she is, or bring comfort to anyone who feels alone, or inspire people to insist on their equality, then it's worth the trade-off with my own. Privacy I have no doubt that a career that consisted of playing many different leading roles helped Cook prepare for this moment, but I'm sure it still required rehearsal. Cook even acknowledged how he plays different roles. I'm an engineer, an uncle, a nature lover, a fitness nut, a son of the South, a sports fanatic, and many other things. Here's a different kind of example. Many coaches, from Herb Brooks to Phil Jackson, also play roles that help them get inside their players' heads and motivate them to perform. Phil Jackson plays the Zen master role to near perfection. He talks to the media, writes books, and sprinkles into talks with players and coaches his understanding of Eastern philosophy and psychology and how it applies to winning at the mental game of playing basketball in the NBA. Most people of a certain age remember the miracle on ice and the improbable victory of the United States men's ice hockey team over the Soviet Union in the 1980 Winter Olympics. What you may not know is that the U.S. team's coach, Herb Brooks, consciously developed a role as part of his strategy to compete. As a coach at the University of Minnesota, Brooks's coaching persona was that of a nice guy who supported his players. In coaching the U.S., Olympic team, however, he played an entirely different role. Knowing that the players he selected came from different college programs and had been rivals on the ice, he needed to break them down before bringing them together. How did he accomplish this feat? 
Brooks became a demanding drill sergeant of a coach who pushed the players through all-night skating drills, effectively bringing them together by making them hate Brooks and his harsh style more than they hated each other. By the time they reached the Olympics, the players had bonded over their experiences and felt unified as a team. Brooks took a big risk in playing that role, but it paid off. I'm sure there are many other examples you can think of from leaders you've admired.